Hi, my name is Laia and I will be presenting our work titled Sign Language Translation for Instructional Videos. This presentation is structured in five parts. I will first give you a brief introduction about sign languages and their challenges together with an explanation of the task that we tackle. Follow will be related works or approach and experiments and finally the conclusions. So let's start with an introduction. Sign languages are visual languages that communicate through hand, facial, as well as body movements and are commonly the main form of communication among the deaf and hard of hearing communities. They are not universal, which means that they present their own linguistic rules that are also different from their spoken language counterparts. There are many tasks within the sign language domain. Uh, note that in our case we are working in the continuous sign language domain that is videos that contain whole sentences rather than just individual signs. And two tasks that often get confused are sign language recognition and sign language translation. Recognition consists on identifying each of the signs within a sentence, while translation aims at directly mapping signed sentences into text. And our work focuses on these later tasks. We can pose sign language translation as a machine translation problem. Uh, this means that it's a sequence to sequence pipeline where instead of having spoken language at the input, we have a visual language. And similar to machine translation algorithms, what we want to have is an autoregressive decoder that is able to predict text conditioned on visuals. Recent advances in sign language translation have followed a trajectory similarly to other computer vision and natural language processing problems, which is training deep neural networks on large scale datasets. However, the availability of public sign language datasets is limited and especially reduced when considering parallel corpus of videos and their textual translations. Up to date, the most used uh, dataset is uh, Phoenix 2014T with roughly nine hours of video recordings and the restricted domain of weather forecast. So in this work, we consider a much larger and more complex data set, namely how to sign. How to sign contains over 80 hours of instructional videos where videos and English transcriptions have been aligned. While this data set has been explored for other tasks, such as sign language video retrieval, and sign language video generation, it has not been used for sign language translation. Uh, next section, it's related work, so let's dive into it. This table shows the current state of the art in terms of the BLEU metric for different sign language translation benchmarks. Some reasonable BLEU scores have been reported in mainly three datasets of limited vocabulary size and restricted domains. Recently, bigger and more complex datasets such as OpenASL have been released and this has translated into a drop of performance in translation. Our work aims at the more open domain of instructional videos across 10 different topics to set the first sign language translation baselines on the how to sign dataset. Let's explain now how we achieve the results in three blocks, preprocessing, implementation and evaluation. This figure depicts the building blocks of our implementation, which follow a sequence-to-sequence -sequence setup. The input video stream is tokenized with a pre-trained I3D feature extractor. These tokens are fed into the encoder encoding layers of the transformer. Then the decoder of the transformer operates with lowercase and tokenized textual representations. And with this whole implementation, we achieve a model that is able to generate text condition both in the video representation and previously seen text. One of the actual ongoing efforts of the sign language research community is to find the best way of doing video tokenization. And although many approaches have been proposed, we chose to use the inflated 3D comnets developed for action recognition and initially trained on the kinetics dataset. Then uh, we use uh, this model for their train with for their sign language data, uh, first for sign language recognition task on the BSL1K dataset, and then for sign language retrieval task on how to sign. 
Similarly to natural language processing, we use tokenization to segment the lowercase text and into subword units, and later to ensure a fair assessment of the system's performance, it's necessary to compare the model outputs to the original testset. So we use a true casing model to reverse uh, lower casing. As for the architecture, we use a classic transformer encoder decoder for which we did an extensive hyperparameter search to find the best parameters for this particular setup. And finally, to evaluate uh, sign language translation, usually blow score um, is used. So blow score is a widely used metric, so we can it can be used to compare with other works. And what blow score does is that it measures the similarity between the predicted translation and the ground truth. So that means that a high blow score, it means that both the translation, the predicted translation and ground truth are similar. However, since our dataset contains instructional videos, patterns such as I'm going to show you how to appear frequently. And when this happens, blow score is inflated. So this means that it's still high, even if the meaning of the sentence has changed completely. To solve this issue and inspired by the work for the machine translation workshop, we introduce reduce blow to keep the best checkpoint. This proposed metric consists of removing certain words from the reference and prediction before computing blow score. To do so, we create a blacklist of excluded words that um, are frequently seen in the training data but don't contribute much to the mean meaning of the sentence. Therefore, we achieve a higher correlation between reduced blow um, and meaningful translations. So, which kind of results did we obtain? Um, in this work, we are proposing baselines and the blow score that we achieve is 8. Um, this is a low score, but it's comparable to OpenASL, a dataset of similar complexity. In this slide, we can see the reference, prediction, and input video of this particular test sentence. Um, in bold, you can see words get to compute uh, the reduced blow metric. This particular example demonstrates the ability of our model to provide, provide detailed translations even for complex words such as woman, self, and defense. And both our metrics are high for this example. In the second example, um, we can see that blow scores might be misleading. In this case, uh, repetitive patterns inflate the blow score, so we emphasize the importance of using reduced blow to select the best checkpoint. Let's jump into the conclusions. So, in this paper, we have presented the first baseline for sign translation on the how to sign dataset. Our evaluations, both quantitative and qualitative, have led us to conclude that reduced blow is a suitable metric for to select uh, best checkpoints for similar benchmarks, uh, particularly for low resource datasets with frequent repetitive patterns. And our final contribution is that we make the code, models, and data easily available to allow reproducibility and encourage further research and advancements in the field. Thank you so much for listening to me. Uh, check out our project page and I will be more than happy to answer any questions that you have.